555 timer I see begins after this one. Let me increase the size. The screen. It's a very common and useful timer integrated circuit, the IC555. This is the model. It is used in a variety of applications for timer, pulse generation, as well as as an oscillator because it outputs an oscillating wave depending on what type of mode you use. It is used to provide time delays. If you want to set up time delay for an on or off function, you can do that using IC555. As an oscillator, I said, and also as a flip-flop element, which is a digital circuit. It is very popular due to its low price, ease of use, and availability. Even if we go back about 20 years ago, like around 2000, 2002, at that point, more than 1 billion was manufactured per year. Maybe nowadays they manufacture even more, but this is the yearly production. The flip, sorry, the 555 is a combination of comparators. There are two comparators inside, which is a linear circuit. And then you have something called a flip-flop it is a digital element so this is a linear digital ic the 555 ic timer comes as a package which has eight pins so you have a rectangular or sometimes a square one there are eight pins coming out of the package the numbers which are shown around the body of this for example, here, number four, this is the pin number. Number one is a pin number, and then you have output at pin number three. There are two operations of the 555 timer circuit or timer IC. The first one is called the A stable operation. The output coming out of this 555 in a stable operation will be a repeating square wave like the one I'm drawing now. For some time it will stay at high, for some time it will stay at low level. The output frequency has a formula which is given by this equation. 1.44 divided by Ra plus 2 times Rb this combination of resistors multiplied by C. You're looking at a timer circuit, uh, RA and RB, these are external components. This is something you can bring and join on the breadboard. And you have, of course, your DC input, which is plus BCC. There is an external capacitor. This capacitor is charging and discharging. So during charging, it charges through the path involving RA and RB. The waveform goes like this. And then during discharging, the capacitor discharges only through one resistor, which is RB. And it keeps repeating. How fast or how high, let's say, how high does the voltage rise? The capacitor will keep charging as long as it doesn't reach two-thirds of VCC. If you reach two-thirds, which is about 67%, 67% of VCC, at that point, something will happen and then it will start discharging. When the voltage falling will reach one-third, 33% of VCC, it will then start charging again. This is determined by something which is happening inside the 555 timer. During the charging or rising time, you get an output as a square wave, which is the high level. And during the discharging time, the output is the bottom level of a square wave. This is happening for some time, the high. This is happening for some time low. 
you can find the time for high and low. In the next slide, it is actually showing what is manufactured or imprinted inside the IC. These resistors you are looking at now, there are three resistors. They are not RA and RB, remember. These are not the external ones. Right now, we are looking at an inside view. Let me describe a bit. There's a series connection of three resistors. These are setting reference voltage to two comparators at two thirds VCC and one third VCC. Let me highlight the series resistors here. Can you see the first one? 5 kilo ohm. There's a second one. Another one is this one. So three resistors. They are setting reference voltages for two comparators. How? Look at the first one. There is a node. Can everyone see the drawing? Mm, yes. Here is a node. At this node, it becomes a voltage divider. So incoming voltage is VCC. So at this point, VCC times these two. VCC times 10 kilo ohm divided by 5 plus 5 plus 5. So VCC times 10 divided by 15. 10 over 15 is 2 thirds. So the reference voltage at this point is 2 thirds VCC. Oh, it doesn't allow me to draw. Let me highlight this point then. Two thirds VCC is set at this point. Then you look at the other node. Here is the other node. These two black dots. At this point, what is the equation? VCC times five divided by 15. So five over 15 is one third. This is one third VCC. Output of the comparators will set or reset this thing. In the middle, it is called a flip-flop, FF. Output of the flip-flop is then, what is happening? This is one of the output. It is brought out to an amplifier. This is a BGT. The flip-flop also drives a transistor, this one, this one, inside the IC. The transistor collector, usually being driven low to discharge the timing capacitor. So for a stable multi-vibrator operation, where output is a repetitive square wave, the timing the time interval is set by external resistors, RA, RB, and capacitor. Capacitor C, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the C charges towards plus VCC through RA and RB. The voltage will rise until it tries to go above two-thirds VCC. This is the threshold voltage at pin number six right here. So it is charging, capacitor is charging via RA and RB, but what happens? If the voltage becomes greater than this reference, which is two thirds VCC, the comparator is high or low? Comparator number one. When it is larger than two thirds VCC, this is a positive comparator, it will be high output. When it is high output, what happens? Reset is high. Ah, this is connected to R of the flip-flop. Reset is high, as you can see, it is showing here. When reset is high, Q will be low because Q will be the opposite of reset. This Q point is low. 
and then when q is low what do you have here not q the opposite of not q opposite of q is not q so he this is low opposite of this is what high when it is high transistor is on you are getting the base current once it is on the capacitor will start discharging so once your rising voltage goes above two thirds vcc this is what is going to happen reset is high q is low not q is high driving the transistor and the capacitor will discharge through the external resistor i rb let me look at the output pin as well number three we took a high from here not q is high and then it goes through this gate this is a not gate so high opposite of high is low once you go to the maximum level it will start discharging that's why it is low high goes inside the not gate and it becomes as a low output at pin number three so now remember what is happening capacitor is discharging the voltage is going down and down discharging transistor we turned it on using the base current causing the output at pin number seven this is discharge pin number seven discharging pin number seven the output at pin number seven will discharge the capacitor capacitor voltage will keep decreasing until it drops below one third VCC. This is here. One third VCC is given at this point. And this voltage is being sensed. So when the plus pin is larger than the minus pin. At the minus pin, the capacitor discharging voltage is now less than one third when the plus is greater than the minus it is high output means set is high when the set is high it sets q to the high level not q means the opposite of high which is low transistor is off when the transistor is off, it no longer discharges. The discharging current is not working. Capacitor will keep charging. So when the capacitor voltage decreases and it goes below one third VCC, now it is time to charge again because it crossed the lower limit. On the bottom right, you also see LM555C. This is the model of the timer IC. Okay, so what did we see? Not Q is low and low goes to a not gate comes out as a high output, which is correct because right now the capacitor is charging. If we go back, capacitor is charging. Output pin number three is high. When the capacitor was discharging, output at pin number three was low. You also see the pin number seven it is to discharge the capacitor through RB. Any questions? It needs a bit of practice to analyze this stage by stage. Are there any questions? Can we move on to the next slide? Uh, yes, I think so. So all this equation, I think we should actually do this. How do we know that the frequency of this oscillation is 1.44 over RA plus 2RB times C? This is done by some equation. If you know how to find the capacitor voltage. The charging equation for a capacitor is this. VCT equals, this is a time function. So the voltage at any given time equals 
the maximum voltage V max 1 minus E powers negative T over tau. Tau is the charging time constant. During charging, what is the time constant? You know the value of time constant is R times C. Here R is equivalent R. So equivalent R, when it charges, it is using two resistors in series. Therefore, equivalent R is Ra plus Rb. And then multiplied by this capacitance C. This is the regular charging equation, but we have to add this thing, V initial. If you start from zero, then this term is zero, but we set the bottom limit to one third of Vcc. So the equation is like this. Vmax is two-thirds Vcc. That is our maximum limit that we can tolerate for the upper one. Two-thirds Vcc equals Vct. When it goes to maximum, it will be two-thirds Vc, two-thirds of Vcc. So two-thirds Vcc will equal two-thirds Vcc, which is Vmax, times this one in the bracket. 1 minus e power negative t over tau. Right now we are trying to find the high time, how long the output will stay high. That's why instead of small t, we put t sub h, high time. And this is your the denominator of the e power is your tau plus your initial level. You can actually simplify the equation a bit. If I look at it quickly mentally, one third, one third, one third. Now we can simplify VCC first. You have two thirds VCC on the left hand side, one third VCC on the right hand side. You take this on the left hand side, you're going to get one over three, right? One over three. Here you have two over three. Three and three gets cancelled out, and you have one, you have two. So on the left hand side, you can bring half. VCC gets cancelled out from both sides. You have on the left hand side half equals this. Am I right? Half equals uh, 1 minus E power negative TH over this thing tau. If you want to get rid of the exponential E, you have to take a natural logarithm of E. If you take a natural logarithm of the right hand side in order to balance the equation, you also need to take the natural logarithm on the left hand side. On the left hand side, we had half, so natural logarithm of half equals ln of 1 minus e power this. What is natural logarithm of 1? You can find in your calculator, it should be 0. Is it 0? ln of 1, it is 0. What is natural logarithm of half? I think it's 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7. Negative 0 0.693 yes. in my calculator. So if you take ln of half, it is negative 0 0.7. Remember, there's a negative sign. Now you're taking natural logarithm of 1 minus this. This is 0, so you have minus sign again, natural logarithm of e power x equals x, that is the formula. So natural logarithm, zero minus ln of this, so minus th over Ra plus Rb times c. This is a minus 0.7, this is a minus something, minus and minus will get cancelled out. So th will be 0.7 times Ra plus Rb multiplied by C. This is the final derivation. In order to find the frequency, we need the total period. What is the total period of the waveform? Let's go back to the first one. The total period is calculated by taking the high and the low time. So we have th which is 0 0.7 times ra plus rv times c and then we need to find t low when you 
add T high and T low, you will get the total T and the frequency will be inverse of the total T. So the next slide, we have to find out the low one, the low time. How do we derive TL? During the discharging, charging equation and discharging equation for a capacitor is slightly different. For charging, the time function Vc is V max 1 minus E power negative T over tau. But for discharging, the 1 is not there in the bracket. It is only V max times E power negative T over tau. See the difference. This is the charging, 1 minus something. This is just E. We know the Vmax is 2 thirds Vcc. Small t will be the low time, Tl. We are trying to derive this by using a natural logarithm. At discharging, Vc at low time is 1 third Vcc. Tau is Rb times C. Why Rb times C? Discharging happens with only one resistor, which means Ra is not involved in the discharging path. So Rc equals Rb times C. For the discharging, the low on the left hand side, you take the low level, one third Vcc equals two third Vcc times this thing. And then when you take the natural logarithm, you can hear one third, one third goes away and then you have half. You will get this simplified version. This is again minus 0.7 and then you have a minus sign, minus and minus sign gets canceled out because you know ln of e power x equals x. So you have to have this minus sign. So I can guess. TL equals 0.7 RB times C. Let's see. The low time is 0.7 RB times C. Therefore, the frequency is 1 over T high plus T low. You're taking the total time. It comes to about this 1.44 over RA plus 2 RB times C. The problems which are asked from IC555, they're usually simple ones. If we want to make it complicated, we can also ask for the description. What happens? Like given the schematic diagram, what happens during charging and what happens during discharging? We can do that. Maybe we'll look at a simple example. I'll show you an example of an a stable multi vibrator. Who was the last student that participated in the previous exercise? So we have to start from after that. I can't seem to remember. Today I'll start with Mr. Kong Su. Kong Su, are you present? Is Kong Su present? Seems not. Okay. Martin? Uh, yes, sir, John. Okay. Martin will solve something. Let me actually switch the screen. No, not this one. OK, let's do this one. For Martin, I would like you to find T high. The next person after Martin is Kolawit. Is Kolawit here? Yes. Finding T low. Mr. Pichayut? Yes, Tom. Pichayut, please yes. find the frequency 
of the output waveform. This is a 555 timer with two external resistors and one capacitor. Each of the resistor is 7.5 kilo ohm and capacitor is 0.1 microfarad. The time is expressed in second or millisecond, whichever you think is suitable, and then frequency is in hertz or kilohertz. What's the high T equation? 0 0.7 times RA plus RB and multiplied by C. Low is only 0.7 RB times C. You have to do this because it is asked individually what is the high time and low time. If you want to find the total T, there's a shortcut. Total T is this thing, 0.7. And if you add T high and T low, you'll get RA. And then you have 2RB. this whole thing multiplied by C. Martin, have you found out the high time? Uh, 1.05 milliseconds. 1.05 milliseconds for T high. I think that's the correct answer. So the high wave, square wave, the high period will be for 1.05 milliseconds. What about the low time? Kulawit is doing the low time? 525 microseconds. 525 micro? If you yes. try to express in milli, what will that be? The uh, 1000 times smaller. So 0.525 milliseconds. Yes. If you wrote 525 microseconds, that is also correct answer. That is OK. I just expressed in millisecond for both. And which are you? You can find the frequency like this 1 over t high plus 1 over t low. What is the value? What's the value of frequency? Uh, 0 0.63 kilohertz. 0 0.63 kilohertz, meaning that this is 630 hertz? Yes. Or something different? 0 0.63 for 9 for digit. Okay, 635 then, 0 0.635 kilohertz. Or you can say 635 hertz. This is kilohertz. If you are asked to draw the waveform for the capacitor voltage and the output voltage, output is coming at this point. 
let me try to just illustrate for the output voltage what is VCC one third of VCC okay one third of five volts But if you try to draw an output in general, you will see T high is about one millisecond. This is about half millisecond. So the high time is twice as bigger as low time. If I draw like this high and then only half of it is low and then high, you can see the positive or the high time and the low time, they are not the same. It stays high for longer than the low time. If you want to find the charging and discharging voltage, it will go from one third BCC to two third BCC. 66%, maybe about 3.5 volt because BCC is five. So the VC will go to 3.5 and one third is 1.7 or 1.5, just an approximation. The capacitor charging voltage will go from here. This is about 1.5 or 1.7. I'm just guessing and this is 3.5 around that amount. Capacitor voltage does not go to zero. This is zero and this is five. So during the high time, if we draw like this, during the high time, it charges. During the low time, it discharges and then again charging, discharging. Also, you see the charging time is longer the discharging time is shorter. Why is that? Because in the charging time, the tau equals RC, it has two resistors. The value is long. That's why the time to charge takes long. For discharging time, only one of the R multiplied by C. So discharging will be very quick. In my lab class, the circuit I use is the opposite. Not 555, five, five, just experiment number six, which I do for circuit lab. During charging, we use only one resistor. During discharging, there are two resistors. But this is the idea for 555 IC circuit. It is not complicated. The formula is given the frequency formula. This is we did step by step. If you want direct formula, F is you know what it is 1.44 if you just flip this thing 1 over t it becomes approximately not exactly so let me write approximation 1.44 over what ra plus 2 rb mc And then C. That's the F formula. Probably T high and T low is also on the equation sheet. I can't remember at this moment. We'll switch back to our lecture. So how many operations did I say the IC circuit 555 timer circuit has two operations. The first one you saw a, a stable multi vibrator, a repeating square wave, which goes just like this. It keeps repeating according to the frequency set by the external resistor and capacitor. In the next slide, we will see another operation of a 555 IC which is called a monostable operation. In a monostable operation, 
the output is just one shot. This is the output. The pulse, high pulse, will be just only for one time. How long does it stay on? Also is set by the external elements. You have now RA. Where is RB? There is no RB. You have only one resistor externally, and then you have your one capacitor. Together, the high time is set according to the formula 1.1 RA times C. The many, uh, a common mistake example I've seen from the student. I gave them a one pulse monostable operation and asked them to find the high time. They put 1.1 or 0.7 RA plus RBC, even though there was no RB in the circuit. So that is totally wrong. You should see. If you see two external resistors, that is a stable multi vibrator. If you have only one external resistor, that is monostable operation. How does the timer know when to start the high in high output? It is triggered by something. It needs an input trigger. The input trigger, where does it come from? And the input trigger also has a high level and low level. It is triggered when the input trigger is on the negative side or the high side, low side. When the input trigger is low, the negative edge, the output goes high. The negative edge of the input trigger, it causes the second comparator, comparator two, to trigger the flip flop. Maybe we have to revisit again the schematic diagram. This is the trigger. So when you have the negative edge of the input trigger, the comparator two will trigger the flip flop. Comparator is, this is number two. When the flip flop is triggered, set is high, Q is high, not Q is low. Again, it goes to the output as high. Capacitor C at this moment will keep charging. Because when Q is high, not Q is low, it is not discharging. Capacitor will keep charging via external resistor RA. It will be trying to approach BCC then. During this time, the output from pin number three will remain high. When will it go low? When the output, when, when BC, the capacitor voltage, tries to go above two thirds of BCC, what will happen? Comparator one, will trigger the flip-flop to reset and then the output at pin number three will be low. This is what happens. When you have the negative edge of the input trigger, comparator two will set the flip-flop, the output will be high and it will keep at the high level until Capacitor C voltage does not go above two thirds BCC. When it goes above two thirds BCC, then the comparator one will be active. It will trigger the flip flop to low, and then you have low output at pin number three. You can actually set the time. How long do you want to stay it on for? You can set the time from a very small microsecond level to many seconds. What is one example? I'm thinking of one example now. Maybe you have an intruder alarm or you have an intruder alarm. Sometimes some houses 
scientists in found they had a light motion detector light at night when someone passes in front of the gate the light turns on it stays for about maybe 10 15 seconds or maybe 30 seconds and then it goes low again unless it receives another trigger so the motion the motion sensor is providing the trigger and immediately the output goes high the light goes on if you have an alarm the alarm will sound when the person moves away in front from in front of your house and after maybe 10 15 30 seconds no other trigger happens the light will shut off the alarm will shut off you can also use the 555 timer I see in so many of your senior project to give some time delay. In this case, you're giving a time delay for either staying high or low. You want to keep something turned on or you want to keep something turned off. You can use 555 timer IC for both operations using this monostable output. If you want a clock, you can actually create a clock, a digital clock, using the 555 timer IC, but which operation? You have to have the A stable operation with RA and RB. So the output will be a repeating square wave. That wave has a frequency that will be your clock frequency. Any questions about the 555? The examples are very close to each other and usually from the book. Maybe I have one for your homework. When this chapter is end, I'll give you homework number four. Do you have any further query or curiosity about this timer circuit? So if not, can we move on to the next slide then? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. I must tell you that the content after the midterm, maybe it's short in duration, but it's quite boring. You have a lot of things to remember comparing to problem solving. The problem solving for after the midterm is simpler because many of them straight using the value in a formula, which you have seen in this chapter. There's a formula for 555 monostable and a stable operation. Comparator is a bit different. DAC, it has a formula for output as well as resolution. Same for the ADC. There is not much circuit analysis in this chapter where you have to find KBL, KCL, not like that. Now we are on to a new subtopic called the voltage controlled oscillator. What is a VCO? I short, in short, I call it VCO. The voltage controlled oscillator is a circuit which provides a varying output signal. You can have a square signal or a triangular wave. And the frequency of this signal is controlled by an input DC voltage. When you see the term oscillator, you have to think about oscillation. An oscillation is a repeating periodic wave. It's a regular repeating wave. And it is controlled by a voltage. As such, it receives a voltage and it gives you a frequency. An oscillation with a certain frequency. You want to change the frequency, you have to change the voltage. What are the common applications of VCO. You can use this for electronic jamming. So if you want to jam signal, this is usually digital warfare. For example, during the war, you want to jam the frequency signal of your enemy. The aeroplane can do it. Some equipment in the ground, they can also do it. In the sea, the, some of the ships can do it. VCO is 
one of the applications, one of the components of electronic jamming. Function generator, we have function generator in the lab. If you have ever used one, you see that you change a knob, you change the frequency within a certain range. What is happening when you change the knob of the VCO, the function generator? You're actually using a variable resistance. When you change the knob, because of the resistor connection, the voltage is changing. Therefore, the frequency of your output is changing. Commercially, VCO can be used for music production and noise production. Another application of VCO is in a circuit called PLL, phase lock loop. It is the opposite of VCO. Frequency synthesizers in communication circuit. Just like 555 is the most common model of timer IC, one of the most common model of VCO is called 566, LM566. It's a general purpose voltage control oscillator. The VCO uses current sources. So now we can look at the block diagram. What's inside the block diagram? Let's see what's inside. This is a general block diagram. You have some current sources. This is a digital element known as a Schmidt trigger. You have two op amps. These buffer amplifiers are used just before the output and it will provide the output. At pin number three, see what is happening. A square wave output. At pin number four, what is the output? It's a triangular wave. As you can see, there is a capacitor at externally at pin number seven. If you think of capacitor charging and discharging, the voltage goes like this. So the triangular waveform from the VCO is actually due to the capacitor, is coming from the capacitor. And the square wave is coming outside due to this thing called the Schmidt trigger. It is a digital element, so the output will be either high or low. It will be a square wave. Current sources are used to charge or discharge the external capacitor. The rate of charging and discharging, how do we know the rate? How will it be set? The charging or discharging rate, will it be high or low? That is set by R1 and V plus, which is the input DC voltage. So R1 here is your external resistor, and then you have a DC bias, this V plus and R1. This, these two elements, they determine the rate of charging and discharging. What is the purpose of Schmidt trigger? It gives a signal, switching signal. The Schmidt trigger is used to switch current sources from charging stage to discharging stage. So at one level of signal, the current sources will keep charging the capacitor. If the signal goes to another level, the current sources will no longer charge the capacitor, it means the capacitor will discharge. Triangular voltage develops across the capacitor, like I said, the square wave voltage is coming from the Schmidt trigger. These are provided as outputs, both the triangular and the square wave. They are provided as outputs through buffer amplifier. What is the purpose of buffer amplifier? What can be one of the usefulness? Why don't we take it directly? without amplifiers. Maybe your signal is so small, you need to amplify a bit. You need to have some gain. That is one reason. Another reason is, I would say noise suppression because op amp, they have a very high input impedance, which means noisy signal. If it's 
generated inside the noisy signal cannot pass too easily. We have an equation for this. Let me zoom on the equation first. It is a fixed equation. It is given on the formula sheet in the exam. Uh, where is it? Here, yeah, right here. The output frequency of the voltage control oscillator is like this. 2 over R1C1 multiplied by, let me put this in the bracket, V plus minus VC divided by V plus. So what you look before is just a block diagram. Now you can see how the 566 VCO IC can be connected with external elements. This is the connection. You start with a V plus, the DC bias. It's connected with pin 8. And then starting from the right, if you go counterclockwise, the first resistor you will call R1. The second one is R2. The one on the ground is R3. So it's 2 over R1 C1 and V plus minus VC divided by V plus. Can you tell me what is the value of VC in this circuit? How is the value of VC determined? Oh, voltage divider. Voltage divider. So the voltage divider would be like this. 12, which is V plus, 12 times R3 divided by R2 plus R3. You might be tempted to take divided by R2 plus R3 plus R1. No, you don't calculate R1 in the voltage divider because I drew the path of the voltage divider. R1 is not in the path of the voltage divider. Rather, it is connected to pin 6. So 12 times 10 over 11.5, I'm getting 10.43 volt. This is about 10.43 volts right here. And then R1, remember the first resistor after the voltage is R1. This is C1. So 2 over R1, C1, V plus minus VC over V plus. I would ask, I already gave you the answer for VC, 10.43 volts. I'll ask some person to calculate the output frequency. Mr. Jimma, are you present? Yes, sir, I'm here. Can you calculate, given the formula right here, can you calculate the output frequency of this voltage control oscillator? Okay, sir. Please. Okay, I keep this on the screen. I hope all the values are seen clearly. Tisha, what is the value for VC again? VC by voltage divided, it was 10.4 volt, 10.43. You can take 10.4. Thank you, Tisha. Welcome. Uh, three point twenty five. Uh, what's the unit? Hold on, let me do as well. Our one is ten kilo ohm. It's a picofarad. The capacitor is picofarad. 820 picofarad. If you Kilo express in kilohertz, how many kilohertz? Yeah. Uh, three, three, two, uh, 32.5 kilohertz. 32.52. 32.5 kilohertz, that's the answer. In this example, the frequency is a fixed one because you have fixed R1, you have fixed C1. 
it is possible to make a voltage control oscillator that has one highest frequency and one lowest frequency. Can you imagine what, what, in what ways we can do that? If you make R3 a variable resistor, like a potentiometer, there's a high extreme and there's a low extreme. So you have a range of low frequency and a high frequency, which we'll see in the next example, not this one. Potentiometer. So this is somewhere else that I have set it up. In the class notebook, we'll switch the screen shortly. Here it is, should be on your screen now. It's a linear digital IC chapter VCO with a potentiometer. Now see what happens. This is the arm or the wiper. Some people call it wiper, some people call it slider, needle. Maybe I should call wiper. The arm goes sometime to the top of R3, right here. Sometime the arm can go to the bottom of R3. So you see, when you have the arm set to the top, the wiper arm set to the top, what will happen to, what will happen to the voltage divider equation? Let's set the potentiometer arm at the top. Let me draw an arrow. This is at the top. When the potentiometer is set at the top, what is the value of BC? What will be the equation? Let me ask some student. So anyone? Yes. I have set the potentiometer arm at top of R3. So what is VC now? E. This is VC. What is the voltage divider equation when you set at R3? V plus, which is 12, times how many kilo ohm we will set? The node is right here. 12 times how much? Can someone help him? What should be the equation? Time 10. 12 times 10. Is it 10? If I put the node here, 12 times, what's in the bottom? Is it 5K divided by 5K plus 510? No, when you set the node here, at this node is the VC, 12 times 5 plus 18, 23K. 23K. Because when you set the potentiometer at top, you are getting the full value of the resistance, 5K. So 12 times 5 plus 18, 23K. What else do you have in the path? R1 is not part of the voltage divider. 
this is the voltage divider 18k plus 5k plus this is ohm 510 ohm so you have 23.51k isn't it the total of the r2 r3 and r4 23.51k what is the value of vc now then Eleven point seventy four. Eleven point seventy four volts. Eleven. Now we will set the potentiometer arm at the very bottom. No, we should find something, right? We should find the frequency. Let's find the frequency first. What is the output frequency equation? At this point, 2 over is Yapeng here. Are you back from your... Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm back. Okay. I'm giving you the equation right away. Can you calculate the output frequency, please? Based on this equation, please calculate the output frequency when the potentiometer wiper is at the top. As you can see, VC is 11.74 volt, which is pretty close to your supply 12 volts. So you can have on one hand, you can have a voltage which is close to your maximum supply. Uh, 20 kilohertz. About 20 kilohertz. Now we will slide the wiper arm of the potentiometer in the other direction. So erase this one for oh no. this one. Why does it erase everything? Never mind. With this one as well. Now the arm will be set at the bottom of the 5 kilo ohm resistor. Is Seni here? Uh, yes. Now let's find the second VC. Oh, give me a second. Okay. Uh, 9.18. 9.18. So it's 12 times 18K divided by 23.5K, 9.18. The next person in line is Mr. Siripo. 
present? Yes, sir. Please calculate the other frequency then. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, 212.9, maybe you call it 213. Is it hertz or kilohertz? Um, kilohertz. Kilohertz. In the previous example from the slide, you saw that the output is at a fix about 32.5 kilohertz. Now, if you use a variable resistor like this, you can get a frequency starting at 20 kilohertz and the maximum frequency is 213 kilohertz. For low frequency, it is like this. The spacing is more apart. A high frequency signal, they are closely spaced together. My hand is sleeping, but this is a high frequency signal. You can achieve this by varying the resistor. If you put at the midpoint, I think you're gonna get here is 2.5 kilo ohm. So you can also set at the midpoint, but the frequency will vary between 20 kilohertz and 213 kilohertz. There's a good design criteria for BCO. For that, I will bring you back to the slide. It is not written on the slide, but we should know about it. Where should I write? This is another topic. I don't want to start this topic yet. For a good design criteria, R1 should be between 2 and 20 kilo ohm. 2K. R1. So it, as long as your value is in between this, you have a good design. 20. What a pain. 20K ohm. The VC, the voltage that is set by pin number five, it should be between three fourths of V plus, means 75% of V plus to two V plus. Where should I say? Right here, three fourth. Three four B C C. No, it's not B C C it's called B plus. B plus. BC. So as long as it between 75% to 100% of your V plus for your BC value, that should be a good design. The output frequency should stay below 1 megahertz. F O. For all the examples we did, the two examples, it was well below one megahertz. One mega, capital M. And your voltage itself, the supply voltage B plus, should be between 10 to 24. B plus, 10 
it's a plus 10 volt plus 10 to the range let me write the range here plus 24 volts if you are given a design problem you should try to meet these criteria we can look at a design problem if you can't solve the design problem today we can take it home and then we will do in the next class but let me give you some values this i will put in the class notebook Let me call it the VCO design challenge. For a VCO, I'll have to type it as well. Design, bell, design, values of R1, R2, R3, and C1, so that output frequency zero. Hmm, what should I say? 20, 50, 100, Let's say 31, 31 kilohertz. Given P plus equals positive 18 volts. You have to arbitrarily set something. You know you have R1, R2, R3. In the equation, you have 2 over R1, C1, and then V plus minus Vc over V plus. What do you want to take? Let's take two values, R3 and R2. Someone can volunteer. What value do you want for R2 resistor? Can you suggest any values? Two kilo ohms. Two kilo ohms. R3. Three kilo ohms. You want same as R R2? Okay. Two kilo ohms. Try to remember the picture. So what is VC then? Then VC will be V plus times R3 in the bottom. R3 divided by R2 plus R3. VC will be, it looks like it will be half of V plus. Is that right? Because 2 divided by 4 is half. So VC will be half of V plus. Is that the correct calculation? Should be. Okay. Remember the good design criteria now. What should be VC? It will be, it should be 3 over 4 V plus at least. Half V plus is 0.5 V plus. 3 over 4 is how much? 0.75 V plus. If you want to do that, how do we 
if you increase something in the denominator, it will be even less. But we can compensate by taking a higher value of R3. Try to change to a higher value of R3. What should we take? Twelve. You want twelve kilo ohms? Okay. If you take twelve kilo ohms, it will be what? Eighteen times twelve divided by fourteen. What's the answer? Fifteen point four three volts. Eighty five percent of B plus. That's good. You passed one criteria for the good design. VC will be how much did I tell you? Fifteen point four three volts. What about B plus? B plus should be from ten to plus twenty four. B plus we satisfied. Frequency is thirty one kilohertz. Is below 1 megahertz. We also passed that criteria. What's the equation? FO frequency O is over R1C1 times B plus which is 18 minus BC, 15.43. Put this in bracket. Over 18. You know the value already. So you don't know R1, you don't know C1. FO is 31 kilohertz, 31 K hertz equals this thing. You will come up with an equation R1C1 equals something. Let's find that expression. 18 minus divided by 31,000. I have an expression like this. R1 C1 equals 9.21 times 10 power negative 6. Let's see if you can get this one. I got the same value. OK, we don't know R1, we don't know C1, but you are asked to design. We fix R2 and R3. There was a little bit of trial and error involved because you needed to in make R3 larger than R2. We met all other criteria right now, R1 and C1. You can pick any values now of R1 or C1. You can find the R1. You want to pick a value for R1? What should we pick the value for R1? Can you provide me some values? Who wants to give me a value? 2.7. You want me to use 3.7 R1? Yes. 3.7 kilo ohm. Okay. If R1 is 3.7 kilo ohm, C1 will be how much? Just divide that number by R1. C1 
times 10 to the power minus 6. What is that? Right. 2.49 picofarad. Wait, no, uh, nanofarad. Yeah. Nano, nano, nano. Nano. If you can find a capacitor like this in your lab, you can do that. If I take R1, maybe let me take R1 say, as 10 kilo ohm. Let's see what happens. Or 15 or 12 kilo ohm rather. If I take 12 kilo ohm, you will get 767 picofarad or 0 0.77 nanofarad. Okay. It doesn't say anything about the capacitor. Good luck with finding this value. If there's this kind of value, two and a half nanofarad in real life, maybe there is, then you are fine. So this is one of the design example where you have to think. This is the critical step, this one. Taking the proper ratio between R2 and R3 so that VC stays at least at 75% of your supply voltage. Any questions? We'll stop here today. We have one more subtopic left, the phase lock loop. Phase lock loop has quite a bit of analysis as well. Start taking attendance now. Balan? Yes, sir. Tirabu? Yes, sir. Napatra? Yes. Pakong? Yes. Rajay? Uh, yes, sir, John. Tony Khan? Yes, sir. Michelle? Yes, sir. Bill? Sirikon? Yes, sir. Visadu? Yes, sir. Yu Cheng? Yes, teacher, yes. TC Han? Yes, sir, John. Paton Pong? Yes, sir. Pong Su? Not present today. Martin is here. Yes, is here. Pichayu is also here. Jima is here. Swan Yuan, Satawat, Yapeng, they're all here. Seni, Siripo. Present. V2. Seni, present. Yes. V2, yes. present. San An. Yes. Waramed. Mr. Waramed. Yes. Nava one. Yes, here. Natapo. Yes, I'm here. Warapat. Uh, present. Natta here. Yes, teacher. Teacher Yes, sir, I'm here. Komchan. Komchan here, sir. Tiradon. Yes, Tachan. It's an apong. I'm here, teacher. Itia. Yes. See. Yes. Okay, so Kaina. Yes, teacher. Irene. Yes, teacher. Minduin O. Next week, we can finish this chapter and then you will have homework number four. I haven't decided the date of quiz yet. Your Final exam, I think, is on March 18. Is it on March 18? What is the last day of the class? The last day of the class is March 11. Maybe, hmm, maybe within March 3 or February has only 28 days this time. Today is 3rd, 10, 
17, 24, maybe March, 3rd of March should be a quiz. It is 15 days before the final exam. If I try to take on 24, we may not finish all the topics, but if I take on 24, the quiz will be only up to that part. Anyways, I'll let you know. See you again on next week. Thank you, sir. Welcome Thank you, sir. The class is dismissed. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you teacher. Thank you, sir. You, teacher. I have a question. Yes, yes. So, uh, about my midterm, like, uh, what, what can I do? Like, can I check it back? Because uh, regarding my marks, what is the meaning of taking it back? Uh, like, 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 like my answers are wrong or like, uh, it doesn't uh, same as the lecture notes. Like, uh, we can, I want we to can, know why, why we my can review. Like, we can review. Who's asking? Kongsu? It's Kongsu, yes. We can set a time to review. So let me find some time. I'll contact you next week. You and I, we can have a meeting, a chat with Microsoft team. And then I'll display your exam paper and we will discuss where you made the wrong. Oh, yes, sir. OK, so remind me next week again. Remind me this week. I'm quite busy with some project next week. I'll try to find time to review. Oh, yes, sir. OK. Any other questions? If not, you can leave now. It's three o'clock. Class is dismissed. Trisha, can I too? Celine. Yes, I, I want to know my mistake so I can fix it. Okay, Celine and Kong Su, I'll contact you next week. Thank you so much, Trisha. See okay. you. See you.